everybody, welcome to today's edition of the Search Buzz Video Recap. Today is January 9th. My name is Barry Schwartz, and this is the news we covered over the past week at the Search Your Roundtable. Uh, this is going to basically replace, uh, from now on, the Search uh, Recaps, the written ones by Tamar. Um, and we're just going to go to do these videos and have uh, some details about what's in the video in text on the website. And then include links to all those most popular posts, or what I felt is the most important post over the past week at the Surgery Roundtable. So thanks for listening. Again, this is uh, January 9th, and my name is Barry Schwartz. All right, so probably the most interesting thing that happened this week was that Yahoo has sent out a notification to their advertisers telling them they made several changes to their terms and conditions. So I went ahead on January 6th, went through the old terms and conditions, and then compared it to the new terms and conditions, and we saw basically that... Um, um, this, we saw this I document all the changes. One of the changes um, caught wind over at um, a lot of search blogs, including Andy Beal's Marketing Pilgrim, Laura Baker's Search and Journal, and other forums out there. Uh, and that change was about <coughs> uh, basically the thing about where Yahoo has the right uh, legally to go ahead and make changes to any advertiser's account without asking them before, first for permission and without even telling them after the fact that they made the change. Not only that, the advertiser is responsible for all, um, you know, fees and all problems with those accounts, even though the advertiser themselves did not make that change. Yahoo made that change for them. Um, that report was actually we reported that back in June, uh, June fourth, actually, two thousand eight, that Yahoo has made this change. They just didn't send out the notification to all their advertisers about this. About obviously six, seven months later, Yahoo notified the advertisers about this change. And that has caused a big uproar, especially after I, we blogged about it again. Um, that is the big thing. I don't think it's a big deal that Yahoo made that change. Obviously, it's, you know, legally, they probably want to protect themselves from things that happen. Um, obviously, things happen, and they want to make sure to protect themselves. But to actually do this after, to actually make changes to advertisers' accounts without having the common courtesy to actually send them an email saying, we have made a change to your account, um, that's just wrong. I mean, they've done this in the past. We've seen rumors, and uh, you know, obviously, you can't always believe what you read on the internet. And we've seen rumors where people said um, they made changes to my account, they didn't tell me about it, and I reported that back, you know, so even like a year or two ago, that this has been happening. And we have more recent reports too. But um, to do this, to make a change um, to people's average, you know, campaigns without telling them after all the outcries um, this past week about them, you know, having changing these terms of service and to do it without even, you know, without even, you know, telling people about it, um, it's just wrong, especially after the outcry. And that's why I have a post on January 9th saying that they made a change to one of the search engine watch for moderators campaigns at Yahoo. And these search engine watch for moderators, they know what they're doing. And the changes they made were mostly just outrageous. Um, they increased the minimum bids on some of the keywords to $1, which is totally out of the range of what this moderator thinks it should be uh, should be at and there's a lot of other changes they made and they didn't even go ahead and uh, give them the common, common common courtesy to actually tell them beforehand especially after all these posts this week about this yahoo change uh that being said um there are ways to make sure that yahoo doesn't make this change to your account without letting you know you have to get on the phone with your yahoo rep and make sure that you opt out of what they're calling now um Auto, optimi auto optimization. It's an auto optimization feature. Um, if you opt out of it, Yahoo, I think, has a new policy where they will not make changes to your account without your permission. Um, so this is the most important thing probably that happened this week. Definitely want to speak to your Yahoo rep if you have a Yahoo campaign. I think shame on you, Yahoo, for making these changes and actually going through with it. Um, another thing we found that caught popular interest amongst the community was that yeah, Google, Google AdWords is testing a new budgeting option called Time Frame. Basically, Time Frame allows you to say to give Google the ability to automatically use more of your budget throughout the month. So basically, when you set a daily budget, it's often the fact, not often the fact, but sometimes where Google says you set your uh, daily budget to be $100 per day, for example. Sometimes Google won't use the $100, they'll use $95 uh, just because of how things work out. Um, what Google allows you to do now is use a time frame budget uh, feature, which is in testing right now. Not all people have it. And Google will then adjust your daily budget based, I think this is how it works, Google will basically adjust your daily budget based on what you've used based on your monthly budget. So if you use, you know, you have a daily budget of $100, but you use only 95 Google will increase your daily budget for the other days to make up for the fact that you only spend $5 less than one day. Obviously, it's a way for Google to get more money uh, and to make sure to use all of your money that you budgeted. And also, it's a 
way for you to make sure that you could actually use your full budget uh, throughout the month. On the SEO side of things, on January 7th, I posted a summary of a, a Webmaster World thread that basically tells you tips on how to get fast, how to get indexed faster by Google, Yahoo, and Live Search. Some of those include submitting a sitemap, an XML sitemap to the search engines, having obviously a clean navigation structure, getting quality links, going hot on Dig or other social networking sites, making unique, unique and helpful content, using social bookmarking sites, verifying your site with Google Master Tools, Yahoo Site Explorer, and Live Webmaster Tools, and obviously removing any canonical issues, et cetera, et cetera. These are just basic SEO tips. But... On uh, January 9th, I went ahead and posted that's uh, posted about a study that SEO Moz posted where they showed how sitemaps, submitting sitemaps, can actually increase um, or decrease the time it takes a, a crawler to actually get to your site. So they're increasing or they're faster indexing your web pages by after the study shows that they're faster indexing your web pages after you submitted a sitemap. So a site compared compared to a site that doesn't have a sitemap. Um, Google Yahoo, Google Yahoo have indexed or indexing your sites faster, your pages faster. Um, if you submit a sitemap, uh, incredible Bill in a spin thread said maybe it's not to do, maybe it has nothing to do with uh, the sitemap. Maybe it has something to do with FeedBurner and FeedBurner indexing incredibly quickly. Um, I really do think it's more about the sitemap. Uh, I just have that feeling. Um, and we do have a poll up. We only have ten responses because it's just a few hours after the poll. Um, definitely go to the poll on January ninth and fill it out. Most people so far thinks thinks the the credit for indexing it faster um, has to do with a Google sitemap, but I really would like to hear your opinion. A lot of people have a lot of problems with uh, Google, web, web, Google Webmaster Tools and why it doesn't match up with the numbers they see, and specifically the reporting. So somebody did a site command and said, hey, I, you know, I, I see X amount of results, but when I look at uh, my sitemaps in Google Webmaster Tools, it shows me I have less results. Why is it different? Um, well, typically, you know, a sitemap doesn't have all you, you're, the, site, the pages you submit in a sitemap do not have all the actual pages um, that Google can index. So, for example, when I SE Roundtable has a sitemap, we only submit the new blog post, the individual post, but it doesn't include um, pages that Google might have crawled, such as the home page, the archives page, the category pages, the tag clouds, all these different things that we have out there. Uh, we have lots of other pages out there that are not included in the sitemap. So that's why the numbers might be not exactly right. Uh, there is discussion around this at Webmaster World, so if you are concerned about the number of pages Google has indexed uh, being reported in Webmaster Tools versus what's reported at using the site command, definitely go ahead and check it out. January 7th is the post date. Uh, there was a case study in Webmaster World basically showing how transferring page rank with redirects, how long it takes. October 2nd, they did a site, site migration with 301, re, 301 redirects implemented. On January 10th, a week or so later, they lost all their page rank and on new URLs. Um, and October, th I'm sorry, October 30th, a month later, they noticed their PR all had not no values at all. And on December 29th, about three months after they started the process, after 301 redirects, all the original URL page ranks have been returned. So it basically took a three-month process for this guy. Uh, January 8th, I wrote about a new uh, uh, term, I guess, called the honeymoon period, the SEO honeymoon period. It's basically when you... Um, set up a new domain or set up a new site and you you make you do a whole redesign and the site temporarily ranks extre extremely well much better than the old site did and then 20 days later it starts to go back to the previous state of not ranking as well so you'll see number one number two results as opposed to number five six results um, this is called the SEO honeymoon, honeymoon period I'm not sure how many people have seen it um, I have a post out on January 8th Earlier this week, we ran a poll asking uh, webmasters what, how useful do they find the page rank data in Google Webmaster Tools to be. The Google Webmaster Tools reports on page rank data, and most people have reported that they find it completely useless. Um, about 57% said we had 130 plus responses. About 56, 57% said they find it completely useless. 25% or so said they say it's not helpful at all. 15% um, said they find it somewhat helpful, and only 3% said they find it very helpful. Google Trends has been attacked again. This time, uh, some guy went ahead and pushed into Google Trends a plane crashing into the Twin Towers, some ASCII art of it. Uh, if you want to read more about it, January 7th is pretty sad. Thanks for listening to the Search Buzz video recap. Again, my name is Barry Schwartz. Um, this today is January 9th, and this is basically the news that we covered over the past week at the Search Roundtable. Uh, for more news, definitely check out seroundtable.com, and we'd love to hear your feedback, so please comment and uh, let us know how we're doing. Thanks, and everyone have a great week. I'll see you next week. Oh, 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 oh,